So let's start with the first one, with the schema. The best way to show you what the schema or what the schema is, rather than explaining it, is to show you. It's not part of the course, but I think it's something that will benefit you if I show you how. So what I'll do is I'll bring up Visual Studio Code, yeah? Which is a free application that you can download easily from Microsoft. Um, actually on your lab machines, if you follow the lab instructions, you've already installed Visual Studio Code on the machine. It's completely free. Kind of like a simplified version of Visual Studio and it's completely free. And you can install it on Linux also on even on the Mac. So Visual Studio Code, I have it open and I have a sample Azure template here. So I actually go to another one here. It's a sample Azure template that I have here and I have the schema defined here. I want you to try to notice the difference between if I define a schema and if I don't define a schema. So what I'll do is I have this one, it's called Azure Deploy One. What I'll do is I'll save us and I'll save it as, let's save it in a location somewhere. Oh, where's my saving button? Save us. Oh, here we go. So save us, I'll go to save it on the download and I'll call it schema defined dot JSON. And I'll leave it as that, save it on the downloads and I'll click on save. Then what I'll do is I'll go under here and I'll remove the schema definition here. Uh, actually, let me expand this so you can see it much more easier. Let's go view, zoom, uh, let's go control plus, plus, plus. That's better. Is that better, right? Yeah, yeah. I can see, see clearly now. Yeah. Yeah, nice, okay, so this is much better. So let's go. So, uh, and then I'll delete the schema so that it's empty. Notice that I didn't remove the two quotes. I leave the two quotes, I just deleted the content that's in there. I'll tell you where the content comes from in a minute. So, and I will say, ah, oh, sorry, I did the mistake now. You know what I did? <laughs> so let me save this one again and I'll remove the schema definition and then I'll save us and I'll save as schema not defined. And I'll save, and then you will tell me the difference. So I have schema not defined here. I'll close both of them from here and I'll go to open them for my download folder. Are you following me, right? You following me closely? Yeah, are you following me, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. you, you want to see some interesting magic about to happen. So I open schema defined and schema not defined. Mm -hmm. So look at the thing. So look at the one with schema defined. I'm opening this up in Visual Studio Code. I scroll down and I look for, oh, look at this. There's a resource type called Microsoft.network, um, which is the resource provider forward slash resource type virtual networks. What I'll do is I'll remove the hess. Can you see what's happened, right? It's put an underline and says, listen, you are not following the syntax, right? It's meant to be virtual networks, not virtual network. I'm like, yeah, I don't care, you know? This one says here, yeah, parameter VNet name. I'll change this to parameter VNet name 100. It's like, oh, there's something wrong. This parameter that you're mentioning, you've not defined it. So you're mentioning something that you've not defined. I'm like, I don't care. If I go to the one we have not defined the schema and I go to make the same changes, I go to change this from virtual network. Can you see? Yeah, without the schema is making it a plain text. It's not making it a plain text. So you're close, but it's not making it a plain text. What the schema is actually using is that it's going to go to download the schema from this location. And it's going to use that to verify that your syntax is accurate or not. This um, feature is something called IntelliSense. It's one of the reasons why when you're editing an Azure HAM template, you want to be using Visual Studio Code, not PowerShell ISC or Notepad. Because if I take this template and I open it in Notepad, Notepad won't be able to understand that it meant to go read the content of this. If I open this in PowerShell, PowerShell does not understand that it needs to go read the content of this. If I use 
a program like Visual Studio Code or like Visual Studio, once I open it, it notes that, oh, this is a schema field. I need to go download this file and I need to go read the content. And I need to compare whatever you're writing to see if your syntax matches up. So that if you make a mistake in your syntax, it begins to highlight it and begins to underline them and begins to tell you exactly what is wrong. And you can see on the right hand side, you can see that the changes I've made, there's some red there. If I scroll down, I will be able to see where that red is. So is this applicable in the community version of Visual Studio as well? Yeah, it is. So this is it's applicable in any Visual Studio or even okay. beyond Visual Studio, any, so it's something. So it's it's a concept that pro, the programmers use, but we as IT pro guys are getting used to. It's called IntelliSense. IntelliSense, okay. That's what it's called. And what IntelliSense, so for example, using IntelliSense in Visual Studio code. So you see what IntelliSense does is these three things. Can you see that? Code completion, content assist, and code inting. Okay. So for example, as you're typing, it's gonna be helping you to complete because oh, it wow. can read the schema, right? So it knows what the syntax should be. So oh. as you're typing parameters, it's like, yeah, this one should have an enclosed bracket. So I'll complete that for you. Oh, that's wicked. Yeah, it's nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> so 